into this video on rolling over your school data sync and class teams into the new academic year. Um, it's a bit of a tricky topic because it's not a completely smooth process yet, but I thought uh, this guide will hopefully give you a bit of an idea about how you can do it yourself. Um, if you're a Cloud Design Box customer, we do all of this for you, but uh, for, uh, for the rest of the community, we thought this would be quite a nice uh, resource. Um, a quick guide on how you can uh, archive off your old teams and how you can roll over and start creating your new class teams for the new year. Um, if you've not done it already and time is ticking away, September's coming up and you need your new classes creating in Teams um, and Office 365, then we can follow um, a few steps to quickly archive or get rid of your old ones and start importing your, your new classes. So if you're a Cloud Design Box customer, we do this for you, so you don't need to worry about it. But if you um, use School Data Sync, if you input the spreadsheets yourselves manually, then uh, you can follow this guide and hopefully it will help you in terms of what you need to do, uh, how you clean up your current classes and how you set up your new ones. So I'm in the uh, admin center, the SharePoint admin center, and if I go to the admin centers at the bottom and go to school data sync. If you're in the new admin center, you will probably won't find school data sync at the moment. Um, in that case, you'll just need to Google school data sync, click on it and press login. Um, it's not in the new admin center yet. So there's a few things we can do to clean up these. I've got a few profiles that I've been testing and we'll use that as, as an example of how you clean up these. So I'm going to go into Cloud Academy Parent. It's a profile I'm no longer using. So when you originally set up this um, profile, you'd have set an expiry date for it. Um, and that's when the profile will stop syncing from live data. And the reason you do that is if you have got any automated sync set up, if the students have left that group, um, and you know maybe you're in between years, you know you finished in July, and there's nobody in any classes until September. By putting expiry date in, it stops syncing in those empty classes if you're using any sort of automation. So, so that's so that's, uh, that's one thing you need to be aware of. You need to make sure that that ex profile expiry date is set. If it isn't, you can come in, you can edit the profile, and you can set an expiry date. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to set this to expire. So the earliest I can set it to expire is tomorrow. So I can set the expiry date, press save. And then when I come back into this profile tomorrow, I'll be able to run the cleanup processes on that profile. OK, let's fast forward in time. Here's a profile that I'm now ready to clean up and run the cleanup tasks. Now to run the cleanup, what we do is we press run cleanup and you get three options. You can select one option, or you can select two or all three options. So let's go through those. So the first option is mark classes expired. And what that does is it renames the class with exp at the beginning. And so it just, just lets you know which classes are expired. And the next option is archive teams. So this puts the team in an archive state. It makes it read only. So students and staff can't add to the chat. They can't upload files and um, they can't edit the class notebook, but they can still see everything. So they still have access to that class. Archive classes are a bit hidden as well. So they just disappear from your main page. You have to go into um, manage your teams and you can see all your archive teams. The good thing about archiving teams is the teacher can also bring the team back to life. They can make it active again, and it's really easy for the teacher to do that. So archive would be our, our recommended option because nobody loses access. You've still got everything which is archived off. Remember, these classes aren't going to sync with your MIS anymore, so you don't really want to um, keep your classes active because students will no longer be synced into it if they move up or down groups or years. So we believe archive is probably the best option um, that you might want to consider. And the third option is remove students from classes. So if you don't want students to access those old classes again, you can remove the students. It's irreversible. Once they're gone, they're out of those classes. Um, 
but the teachers will still have access. So that's a great option if you want to you know, start a clean slate, you don't want people looking at previous years, and you just want to start fresh. Um, I think most schools probably do want students to still access the resources from previous years. So most people, you know, archive teams is enough. If you've got a strong naming convention, so you've put maybe your year um, or school in front of your class names, then you probably don't need to select this option. If you're not renaming any of your classes, if you've got no prefix for the academic year, then you might want to also select that option to mark classes as expired. Just move them out of the way so you can create your new classes with the same names. So um, I'd recommend, well, for our Cloud Sandbox customers, we use this option uh, for most of them. And uh, you might also want to consider the top, top option as well if you want to remove those classes out of the way and give them a different name. Once you've selected your option, you press Run Cleanup. That will go into uh, running cleanup state, and that might take a few hours. I'll probably come back the next day um, just to give it enough time to run through all those cleanup tasks. The more tasks that you pick here, the longer it will take, and the more classes you have to archive, the longer it will take to, to run. But leave it a few hours, or at the most, leave it a day, and it should finish cleaning up by then. If it hasn't finished cleaning up, then you need to log a support call with Microsoft because something's probably gone wrong and they can help you out with that. So once your classes have been cleaned up, in this case, we've chosen to archive them. You can review your section report to see what progress has been made. Now, one of the problems with the cleanup process is it isn't um, exact. It misses a few classes stuff gets stuck, it doesn't clean up brilliantly. Hopefully Microsoft will fix those bugs for next summer. In the meantime, there are some things you can do to tidy it up yourself if there's any classes that haven't been cleaned up. So what we do is we click review your section usage report to confirm the expired class has been updated. So we click that. It's, you shouldn't really have to manually check this, but you know, that's something that they'll have to work on at Microsoft. Um, but at least there's some workarounds for this currently. You'll see section reports have moved to groups page. So you have to click again into groups. And then you get this pop up section report, generate a new section report. This process may take a while. You can close this pane and check that later. So we can close that. And when we want to check the section report again, we click section report and you should see the report appear here. Now, again, that may take a few hours if you've got lots of classes to report on. It might be quicker than that if there's only a few. Um, what I also do is I refresh the page because do a control F5 refresh page because sometimes it doesn't always update. So we'll give that a few minutes to run. OK, so we've come back. This has taken about a few minutes. It's not taken long. Click on section reports and we can see the CSV has been created. So we can click on that and download it, open it up in Excel. And you see you get this big table. What I tend to do to make it easy to use is select the first cell on the top left, scroll right down to the bottom, select the bottom right cell, and then press Format as a table. Select any table cell you like. Click OK. And you then get some filterable fields here. So I can then see which teams have been archived, which are active, which have no state at all. So if I get rid of the archived ones, you can see unfortunately there's still a number of um, classes that are still active that haven't been archived off. In this case, what I'd have to do is I can either go through them manually and archive them off. And to do that, what I'd have to do, um, if I was just get it manually through the interface, is I would, uh, again, this is a bit of a long-winded process. Hopefully you don't have to do this, um, or hopefully there's just a few that you have to do. You go to the groups interface, filter it by your Office 365 groups, find that particular section that's not been archived. So let's imagine it's this one here. Want to edit the owners add an owner and add in your account. So your admin account that you want to use to archive it off. So I'll add in my account here. 
Quick save. Once you're added to that group, you're going to have to wait about two hours for that to take effect. Again, unfortunately, it's just a bit of a sync thing. Once it has taken effect, so go through, add yourself to all those groups that haven't been archived. Then go back into the Teams interface. So you can only archive a team once you're an, uh, an owner through the interface. Like I say, the owner doesn't take effect straight away. It might have to allow a bit of time between adding yourself into that group as an owner and then going into the Teams admin interface to archive it. Once your Teams admin center starts loading up, if you go into Teams and Manage Teams, this will let you search through all of the teams in the tenancy. When you find the team that you want to archive, you can search for it using the search box. You can select it here, which you find it, and you press Archive. And I would probably check this and make the SharePoint site read-only as well, just so people can't start uploading files and edit, editing the class notebook. So archive that and that will do it for you. So as you can see from that section report that I created, there was a lot um, that I had to archive off. Let's do a quick count of the ones that didn't make it. If I just highlight the cells, so uh, 80. So there's 80 to do. So several hundred of them, they archived are fine. These ones didn't. Um, some of them might be inactive, so maybe you can filter it by the status. You can filter it by other things as well, see if anyone's ever used them before. So you can filter to see if they've actually used the files tab. So that section report will give you a bit of information, but ideally you want to archive off those classes. If that's the only thing you do, you know, archive, archive them off or delete them or get rid of them. So that is a bit of a manual job. I say that you, if, if I had to do that here, there'll be 80 groups to add myself into, 80 clicks to then archive them all. So it's not a great experience. Now, what we've done is we've created an automated tool to do that uh, with our own schools. You might want to do some scripting yourselves to do it for your own school. Maybe you can script it a bit quicker. But like I say, it's not, not a straightforward process and hopefully Microsoft get that uh, streamlined a bit better for the next academic year. So that's a process to archive off your classes um, and clean them up. Once that's happened and you're happy, you've checked your section reports, everything's been done and tidied up and you're ready to start the new academic year. What you do is you click begin new term or year. If you get this error, then obviously just double check your, your, um, your profile, check your section reports, make sure everything has cleaned up correctly. Um, that, so that got stuck on that um, error message. So I just had to click off the profile, back in it again, then clicked it and it worked. Okay, so now if you want to, you can change the name of your profile. Maybe you stuck a year in front of it and maybe now you're reusing profiles. You don't need that uh, academic year in there. So you can always change it at this point. You can then set your expiry date for next year. So again, I would, in the UK, um, for most schools, I will probably set that for something like the 1st of July. So you probably don't want to be syncing when you break up because your classes might have students stripped out of them if you're using an automated way or uploading your CSVs using Flow. So, um, so I'd probably set it something like 1st of July unless the school breaks up earlier. Um, so you set your expiry dates, your profile name. You've got some options here as well. So I'll probably uncheck that. I don't want teachers to change the section names. If you're using the Guardian Sync, which um, at the moment you can't do much with that, but in the future, you'll be able to send out parental digest emails, but you will need additional spreadsheets to do that. So only select that option if you're going to create those parental guardian spreadsheets. And uh, there's also the option to replace on supported characters. So once you're happy with that, you just press save. And then this profile now is ready to accept data again. It's ready for you to upload files. So you can upload your files again, or if you're using the API, you'll be able to um, just start pushing up your files again, pushing up your CSVs or using the one roster API or whatever other APIs you might use to uh, populate school data sync. So I hope you found that useful.
Um, like I say, it's not a straightforward process currently. Hopefully it will be much more streamlined next year, but that should give you enough tips to get you through it. Like I say, you have got the support of Microsoft. If you get stuck, you can log a support call um, through their education support desk. And if you want to look at any of the solutions that we provide for education and how we link SharePoint, Teams and Class Notebook together in an easy to use interface and with our user adoption teach training packages, then have a look at our website www.clouddesignbox.co.uk.